Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest Focus IR CEO interview. I'm joined by Lorna Blazer, CEO at Helium One Group, the AIM and OTC listed company exploring for helium in Tanzania. Helium One has been one of the most followed stocks in London Southeast over the last year, with the share price hitting a high of 10 pence at one point and a low of 0.185 pence. More recently, HG1 announced a commercially significant find of helium on the 5th of February and swiftly followed that up with news of a £4.7 billion placing on February the 7th. Greetings, Lorna, and many congratulations on finding commercial levels of both helium and hydrogen. Thanks, Donald. Pleasure to be here speaking with you this morning. No, it's really great to, to have you on. Now, uh, let me ask, what is it about Helium One and the quest to discover commercial helium which has captured investors' imaginations, you think, Lorna? Because Helium One really has taken off as a stock. It has so much interest. Yeah, absolutely, Donald. And, and a quest it certainly is. Um, I think many of our long-standing shareholders will be aware of the journey that this company has been on over the, over the last few years. And, um, you know, we are now closer than ever. In fact, you know, we, we have found it. You know, we found that elusive helium that has flowed, now flowed 4.7% um, helium to surface, which is which is fantastic news. Um, it's uh, a, a story that keeps keeps continuing and um, I'm delighted to, to be a part of it. Now, do you consider concentrations of 4.7% pure helium and 2.2% hydrogen to be commercial? I mean, what is commercial? And how much do you believe you discovered? How much is actually down there in the Rukwa? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think the the key thing here is that we are a globally unique opportunity. We're working in a geologically unique basin. Um, we are flowing high concentrations of, of helium to, to, to surface. Um, and those concentrations are, are, are far higher than any other pure helium producing fields globally. Um, many of the U.S. and Canadian fields that are in production and 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 are commercial, they've got uh, hydrocarbons as a byproduct, and they've got much much lower concentrations of helium. Um, you know, le- less than one percent. You know, here we're looking at four point seven percent. If we don't have the hydrocarbons, we don't have the CO two. We very much have that pure pure helium. And of course, now in addition, we do have the hydrogen as well. Um, we're still evaluating that. Uh, we were still establishing exact, exactly what we do have here. Um, and in terms of that sort of important commercial commerciality word, you know, there's a lot of data here that we're currently unraveling and, and pulling apart. Um, the well data, the flow data, um, the logging information, there's a huge amount there that we, we need to fully fully establish and understand before before we know what we have, but we'll certainly be keeping the market updated. So what comes next in terms of exploration in Tumbula and elsewhere in the Rukwa? Uh, you know that helium and other gases flow from the fault zone and uh, from the basement interval. So, uh, you know, all that learning that you've, as you say, you're actually doing currently. I mean, and, you know, how do you roll, do you roll that forward? What are, what are the thought, your thoughts on that? Yeah, an, another great question. And, it, and again, I sort of come back to the complexities of what we've, unraveled here in this unique play concept you know going about drilling faults and fractures where we're seeing that helium come out out of solution and and flow to surface is is a huge milestone for the company um however it's it's shifted our our, our mindset slightly into how we adopt an approach going forward to to to, to develop this 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 scenario and to develop the the, the field that we've effectively discovered. It, it's not straightforward. Um, you know, we've got pressure data from the well, we've got flow flow information. Um, but like I said, establishing that from a fault zone where you haven't got conventional sort of matrix porosity and reservoir parameters, it, it, it does take a little bit of understanding and, and we are going to have to use a, a, a different mindset to evaluate. Um, However, like I said, once we have that information, we, we will be able to, to to put that out to to the market and give a more more cohesive story. Um, but you know, moving forward, we've, we've got a number of um, sort of options and positions that we that we might take at this stage. Um, once we've completed that all important sort of evaluation of the data, then then we'll be in a position to announce those those future steps, whether that's going to be um, extended well test or Istanbul West or deepening of Tie Three or other other scenarios but we're certainly looking uh, forward to accelerating our, our, our development our development plan as, as quickly as we can uh, you might say you're learning and adapting as you go absolutely okay 
Now, I understand it's very early days, but what might the pathway to commercializ commercialization look like? You know, what, what in your head might you think it might look like? And could it include geothermal el electricity production to power processing on the side? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely for the latter point there. I mean, another unique outcome of this world was the fact that we had those high geothermal gradients, which we really were not expecting. We are we are in an active risk system here in East Africa. Um, geothermal gradients are elevated, but we weren't quite expecting them to be this high at, at such shallow depths at Itambula West. Um, certainly for a development scenario and, and moving forward, we, we would be hoping to harness that geothermal energy into some sort of low enthalpy plant you know harnessing what's already in the earth um to generate the electricity to to power any any plant going forward i mean that that would keep certainly our, our, our capex costs down um and enable us to fulfill that as 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 cost effectively as possible um you know something although we're still evaluating a lot of the data i think i think the other point here to put across is that you know, we we did things differently with this well. We 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 tested the well. We also had our own independent verification at site. We had a field PVT experts with their independent laboratory. So those samples that we've recovered from the downhole uh, uh, tools and the and the and the and the flow testing, they were analysed at site. They were they were extracted and 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 measured under reservoir temperature, pressure, and conditions. And so we're very confident what that four point seven percent tells us and and will yield us. Um, we. We will be sending some um, samples off to a lab, but we're not we're not waiting on the results of those samples in order to move forward with with our, our next steps. And I think I think that's quite an important message to to, de to get across. We've already had that independent verification through the through the field PBT work. Um, you know, in terms of what we'll be doing, as you said, Donald, I keep saying it. You know, it is still very much in its infancy. Um, you know, wouldn't want to be putting out there. Um, firm plans that that aren't yet or well, ideas that aren't yet firm um we're also establishing what the hydrogen may mean for us in the basin um we've, we've reached out to other um hydrogen operators um reached out to other obviously helium operators who are who are producing we're starting to explore um what a, what a plant um potentially would look like and what sort of footprint and costs would come with that so there are a lot of moving parts at the moment but uh rest assured we are we are certainly not sitting back and and waiting for things to to unfold we're, we're getting after it okay and um, this question comes from ignorance rather than expertise um would you use existing technology to capture and compress both helium and hydrogen um <clears throat> Yes, I mean again, it's 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 in its it's in its infancy. Um, we are learning as we go along, um, but I think you know a lot of existing oil and gas technologies are are and approaches do come into play here. Um, these these are gases at the end of the day, and so there is a lot of parallels and 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 overlaps. Um, we'll be researching what that technology means. Coming back to the uniqueness of this project. Helium is always combined with a carrier gas. And like I said at the beginning, we're unique in the sense that we're exploring for pure helium because we don't have those sort of nasty hydrocarbons um, as a byproduct that are driving it. We have um, nitrogen in this scenario that, that, that's, that's mobilizing and, and driving the helium. Um, and, and that makes it, you know, that makes it unique, but it also makes it in some sense a, a little bit more straightforward. Um, you know, we don't have any carbon dioxide in the system either. Um, it really is just a pure... Um, Green, green helium, pure helium, uh, nitrogen mix with also with this addition of, of the gold hydrogen as well. Okay. Uh, in terms of news flow, what does the coming year look like now that you've had some real success? Um, very good question. Um, so obviously the next steps is to establish what this discovery means, um, working through that data set, evaluating all of the information that we have. So sort of our next short-term um, outlook would be looking to update the market on on what that means and putting it into into, into context. Um, we would then be looking for looking forward as to how we then develop the the project, um, and we'd be updating the market accordingly um, and appropriately once we have that information and once we've done those engineering studies, those subsurface studies, and everything else that that, that feeds into into that work. Um, there's a lot. Also going on in the background, I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we you know, a lot. It, it isn't just a case of drilling the well, taking the data and running with it. You know, a, a lot of other things have to go on as well. You know, we've got good res relationships established with the government in Tanzania, with the Mining Commission. Um, we've 
got our existing licenses to consider. We've got future licenses to consider. Um, they're it, reaching out potentially to um, partners who might be interested in the project. So there's, there's, there's a lot going on in the background and, and I'm hopeful that they, they will proceed um, and we'll be announcing um, this as and when is, is feasible. No, I can appreciate it. It's a very busy time for all concerned. Uh, my final question, why should investors add HE1 to their watch lists? Well, I think as we touched on at the beginning, you know, we are a unique helium opportunity on AIM. We are the only um, helium company registered on AIM um, and that in itself is is unique. Um, this the, the, this results from the Itabilla West One World are do offer a transformational opportunity for the company. And I think anyone interested in in investing in a helium project would absolutely should be viewing this as as something that gives that opportunity to have transformational growth um over 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 a period of time. We're also chasing a new new play concept. Um not only is it the pure helium play, but also targeting these these faults and fractures deep within the base basin, um, which makes it relatively uh, unique uh, globally in terms of a helium play um, and obviously our, our immediate intention to sort of take this forward and, and monetize the project as, as quickly as possible um, and I think also I, you'll like this comment Donald you know we I think we probably one of the most talked about stocks on on, on London Southeast um, and you are and probably one of the most traded so I'm, I'm very aware of that we're very aware of that as a company and uh, we look forward to continuing our news flow as and when we can. Lorna Belisa, see you at Helium One. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we very much look forward to hearing from you again in 2024. For more company information and to access that, as we've agreed, extremely busy company bulletin board, please go to the Helium One page on London Southeast, along with many, many other investors. And meanwhile, do follow us on Twitter. That's at underscore focus IR underscore and at London Southeast or register on London Southeast YouTube to receive alerts to our next Helium One interview. And all that remains for me to say today is thank you very much indeed for watching.